All right, this is gonna be your hardest lesson so far. Not the hardest in the whole course, but the hardest so far. Pages 25 through 30 of page 1122. Wowzers. <clears throat> if you feel like you made it through physical science with the skin of your teeth, and you're hoping chemistry isn't gonna to be too hard, well, this will be challenging. No math, okay, no math yet. It still is just concepts. Um, I'm gonna to try to explain it to you, and I'm gonna give you a heads up about a few places in the pace that you don't need to really drill deep. You can be comfortable with saying, I don't get it, and it's okay. You can finish the pace saying, I don't understand it, and you'll still do absolutely fine on the test. They're just trying to introduce you to some, to some ideas that will later, maybe in college chemistry, come back and you'll have to dig deeper then. But uh, you're not, we're not going to have to really master some of the stuff that they cover in this section. <clears throat> do have your periodic table handy and your pace. All right. Let's talk about, um, here on page 24, Maybe you remember this from physical science. We did a video about the SPDF. These are called sublevels, or they're also called orbitals. And energy levels, okay? So energy level one, covers on pretty tight. Energy level one only has S. Energy level two has S and P. Energy level three has S, P, D. Energy level four has S, P, D, and F. So as we get to each energy level, there are a higher and higher capability of handling more and more electrons. Now an orbital, the uh, S orbital, is round. I picture like a ping pong ball, okay? And this is the first energy level. All it has is one S orbital. The S orbital has only one air orientation. It's kind of like a track. Can you see I wrote on this ball? And it's kind of like, uh, looks like a road. Well, there's one arrow going this way, and in here an arrow going this way. So these two electrons are going opposite directions. One spinning this way, one the opposite way. Two electrons per, whoops, there it goes. Okay, so each, each of these orientations can hold two electrons. So S, one times two is only two. When I get to P, P is like A has more space available on it. So we can have a track going this way, one electron this way, one this way. We can have a second track, one this way, one this way, and a third one, one this way, and one this way. Now technically your pace explains that the shape is not a ball. It's actually shaped like the, I don't get that. It's, that's confusing. Um, but anyways, the point is the numbers. So P, the P orbital or sublevel, those terms are interchangeable, can have three orientations. The pace calls it X, Y, and Z, okay? Each of these can hold two electrons. So how many total electrons can we have on the P sublevel? Three times two is six. Now any book I've looked at, in the, and the paces especially make clear that once you get to D and F, you can't visualize it anymore. We just have to know that there are five tracks, five orientations. So D is five times two. There's 10 possible electrons in D. And then two times seven is 14. There are 14 possible electrons in the F sublevel. <clears throat> now I picture the levels as like balls, okay? So the smallest ball would be just the, just the energy level one, it's only S. Then we could you know, picture another ball around here, that's the second energy level, and that would have an S and a P, okay? So S and P adds up to be two plus six. We can have eight electrons in the second energy level. Then the third energy level is like you're adding another ball, like maybe a playground ball outside of this tennis ball. And that can hold S 
plus p plus d. So 18 electrons are possible in the third energy level. So each energy level adds a greater capacity for holding electrons. For now, we're going to stick with electrons that are closer to just the first and second energy level and just the smaller numbers, thankfully. Okay? You actually did this back in physical science. You did the paces. And um, hopefully it'll kind of come back to you. Page 26 talks about the electron pairs actually having like a fractional charge, a positive one-half and a negative one-half, and they're spinning against each other. Again, it's just information. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And then the paragraph on page 26 that says, are you confused? I've read that over multiple times, and I'm not getting any clarity reading it. I'm coming away more confused after reading it. So don't feel bad if you read it and you say, I don't get it. Okay, I don't either. It's, it's deep. Let's talk about how we're going to use it. All right. So we get to the top of page 27, and it shows one type of chart there for filling the electrons in. I think an easier chart is this one. And we had this back in, oops, upside down, physical science. I think I'm going to scan this, save it as a PDF, and put it on the Pace Success website so you can download this. And notice that as we're going, we can fill in two electrons for each of these squares. So each square represents one of these orientations. So I'm going to take the element aluminum, for instance. There are 13 electrons. I can put two electrons in 1s, and then 1s is full. I can put two more electrons in 2s, but then 2s is full. Now I go to 2p. <clears throat> Once those two are full, I can go to 2p, and I can put two, four, six electrons in the two energy level. So two, four, six, eight. So far I have 10. And then um, I, I need to do 13. So I can put 11 and 12 in 3s. And then when I get to the 3p, I can just put a 1 in the 3p. Let me show you up here using, <clears throat> this is called the orbital notation. This is actually new. We did not do this in physical science. We used this chart which doesn't really have a name, it's just a tool to help us. So I could say the first electron goes in one, two, three, four, five, six. These are like half arrows. That's what these are supposed to represent. But they're up close to each other, okay? Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and then the last one goes in 3P, and it's just one, one electron in there. Um, you know, I mean, I'm looking here on page 27. I guess <clears throat> in the page they're doing full arrows. You can do that. I don't know why I did half arrows. But anyways, those represent arrows. Each arrow represents an electron, so they're within each little suborbital, they're going opposite directions. Now how could I write this in what's called electron configuration? It's a shortcut way of writing the 1s, there are two electrons, so I put a, a uh, prefix, not a prefix, a uh, superscript of 2, 2s2, two 2, now I'm going to put all these p's together, and there are six, okay? So I don't have to separate out the X, Y, and Z, showing those orientations. <clears throat> by the way, on this chart, each of those orientations is represented by one of these boxes. But for the entire 2P, I can do up to six. So I'm gonna just put a six here, all right? Three S, two, three, P1. And if you add up all of those exponents, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1, you'll get 13. All right? So if we actually show the arrows and the orientations, we call that orbital notation. If we just simplify it a little bit more, showing the energy level, which is the 1, 2, and 3, 
and the orbitals, which is the S and the P, and then the number of electrons in each of those, that's called the electron configuration. And there's one more type that's going to be very important as we move forward and talk about how elements and atoms can combine with each other, and that is the electron configuration. Electron dot notation. Okay, this is the electron configuration. Electron dot notation means we take just the electrons in the outer shell. This is the most inner shell. Two is the next energy level, but three is all that we have in the outer energy level. How many electrons are in the outer energy level? One, two, three. So we put one, two, three dots around the aluminum. All right? So this is kind of review. This is a little bit new. Uh, we did this before as well, but I'm just reminding you that we're only taking the electrons in the highest energy level, so there's a maximum of eight electrons that could ever. So two on each side would be the max. Now on your periodic table, you will notice that under each element, they have a code, okay? So like here's beryllium, 1s2, 2s2. Here's aluminum. And there's a code right underneath it that shows you the electron configuration. Okay, so that will help you as you're doing that section. Then it goes on, and I'm not going to get into detail here. You need to read it. There's a few questions that you need to be able to answer on the checkup self-test pace test about. Um, what do they call these? On page 30, the last page. We go beyond electrons, protons, and neutrons. There are other particles inside called quarks. Let me get it up here where I can read it. Leptons, muons, neutrinos, and tau particles. And then we have hadrons. And they include baryons and mesons. Baryons include protons and neutrons. Mesons include numerous other particles, some of which exist only for microseconds. And then they go on and talk about hadrons can be broken down into smaller particles called quarks. There are six basic types of quarks. Oh my goodness. Put your mind at ease, okay? This is not something you really have to understand to pass chemistry. So if you read that and you say, my mind is blown, I had a hard, time, hard enough time remembering protons, electrons, and neutrons. I am not going to remember all of these. It's okay. Uh, in fact, the chemistry course that I usually teach from, this, the Apologia, uh, does not talk about these other particles at all. It's not needed to be successful in chemistry. They're just introducing you to some ideas. And uh, you can throw it around at the supper table and impress your dad. Okay, impress mom and dad with all the stuff you're learning. Um, just a few knowledge questions that you'll have to be able to answer on the uh, upcoming tests, but nothing that you're going to have to really do with it, and you don't really have to totally understand it, okay? Just know the terms, know how they're organized, and the questions and the pace will help you do that. So I hope this lesson uh, helps you get to the end of the pace. The first two paces haven't been too bad so far, do you agree? I mean, this is kind of hard, but the doozies are coming, I promise you. All right? We'll see you in the next pace.